Good morning. Welcome to Caribbean Weather Dude YouTube channel. By the time you watch this, though, it might not be morning already. It's 11.09. It's the 24th of November. Blue Jays play game one in Toronto today against the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm totally stoked. And we've had a lot of weather stories to talk about, so let's get on with it real quick today. Hit like, share, subscribe. Joey on the Caribbean Weather Dude YouTube channel. Today, we have the atmospheric river now departing from British Columbia, moving on down the coast. With that comes the risk of some land spouts and water spouts. That could be for Vancouver Island, but especially... Uh, uh, down the U.S. coastline, could see a risk of a weak land spout tornado or a water spout tornado today. And we got snow coming into the B.C. interior. Uh, I do confess that I was a little confused as I was forecasting this week how this was going to play out. I mean, I, I more or less got it correct. Um, it's the number of the lows and how they came in. And now I really have a clear picture of that, that we had one go through. Now we've had two come through. Now here's the third one here. Now that I can physically see it, I can understand its development, what it's going to do. So this guy's going to drop down, follow this line a little bit, and then basically try to push up more or less the way that the, the jet stream is forcing it to right here. So we're going to see that storm come into British Columbia over the weekend, and it's going to make things very messy, very sloppy. We're going to tell you all the details today on the show. Let's go. There it is. Our top story this morning is the slight risk of tornado. Slight risk, and I do mean slight, that we do have, uh, well, you can look here at the NATO cast data viewer. We can see that uh, Texas today is in big trouble. Texas has got a high risk of tornadoes today, high risk of big hail, high risk of damaging winds, this and that. But if you look at the NATO cast right now, you can see that actually we have some shading. That means we got a 1% chance, which is, a, is significant. In meteorology, a 1% chance is still a significant chance you know, of a tornado happening within any 25 miles of a point. So no matter where you live, there's a 1% chance up and down this coast that a tornado might happen within 25 miles of you. Again, that sounds low, but when you look at how many miles there is up and down the coast, you realize, hey, that's a good chance that we're going to have something in our neighborhood, right? So uh, that could even go to the lower mainland. I think that risk is for water spouts through the Gulf of, uh, you know, the Georgia Strait, southern Vancouver Island, down the U.S. coast through Washington, Oregon, and even down to California, a slight risk of a weak land spout tornado or water spout today. Before we talk about the snow on Saturday, let's revisit what happened last night. The atmospheric river came on down through and winds have been very strong. They've started to ease off a little here in Wales today. I can't believe we didn't lose power, but a lot of people did. Still, we have 4,185 people without power in the central interior, 88 separate outages there. We lead the pack in the central interior. And that's why I was warning last night that there could be people who go a couple days without power. I know that's not what Hydro was saying last night, and that may be uh, wrong of me to speculate as to how things might play out. But that's also something you want to hear from your weatherman. You want to hear what I think is going to happen. So, uh, you know, I said, you live on some back road somewhere out there, and you got 10 customers without power. The areas that are most popular are going to be where the, those resources go first. And then what happens is more trees kept coming down through the night. So what we had for our numbers... And of course, more is getting known today as people are finding ways to communicate. Hey, we have no power here. Our lines are out, this or that. Some people live in areas without cell service. If the power lines go down, their phone lines go down, they can't call to say we have no power. So we're finding out more and more people have power. If you recall, uh, for example, yesterday in the Thompson Shoe Swap, we only had one that was affecting more than five customers at 10 o'clock last night. Now we have three reported with 79 customers affected. Lower mainland, Sunshine Coast, 4,194 people affected by 18 separate outages, 13 in the northern region. Region, that affecting 346 people. Vancouver Island North has 2,343 people uh, without power. We know that a landslide came through there, took out a bunch of power lines. So it might be a while for you guys. Vancouver Island South seeing four separate outages, 124 people. We'll have a look at the map right now quickly and have a look at the power outages and see what is going on. Just to give you an idea, some of the Gulf Islands, Galliano looks like it's without uh, power. Up north of Parksville, looks like Hornby Island has no power. Looks like parts of Courtney. Up and down the Sunshine Coast, look at that. Uh, all the way from Lund to Silliman. In Powell River, right on down the coast. Vancouver having a lot of outages. Victoria, a couple. Here's a new one that we didn't have last night on the board. Merritt has one reported that wasn't on the board last night. I'm not going to go through every one of these individually. Someone asked me two last night, and I was like, that's ridiculous. One down by Kimberly there. 
Um, you're, I'm here to give weather reports and just fill you in a little bit what's going on. Still seeing those power outages out in the east side of the Caribou. Looks like horsefly still without. Looks like likely in Keithley Creek area. Still have some outages to report. Seems like there's a bunch in the Quinell area. Prince George loaded up, loaded up. That's a crazy amount of power outages. Prince George is in trouble. Uh, out by 12 Quas Smithers. I hear they got hit really hard last night uh, out in Terrace. Although I don't see much for um, power outages in that exact area. So that's good. It seems like maybe things, but people reporting to be flooding, whatnot. Looks like up towards the Pine Pass, we have an outage. Looks like out by Dome Creek, we have some outages. So a lot of power outages today, people. It's going to be a while before we get the power back on. Here's some good news, BC. Most of our wind warnings have been dropped. Most of our warnings up the coast have all been dropped. So the storm has basically moved uh, more or less into that south quadrant, moving into Washington today, affecting them mostly. So we don't have very much left on the board, but I think we're going to see new statements made as we get snowfall promises I uh, could see some special weather statements, could see a couple snowfall warnings and whatnot that get issued in the next 24 hours. So be aware. Saturday, we're going to see this next storm come on in, like I was pointing out. Uh, we do have 70 to 40 millimeters of rain still this morning. That should uh, track out later today. So we're happy to hear that. We'll finally be dropped to this rainfall warning. will probably get dropped to as well. That's only for this morning. And the special weather statement for Vancouver is for today still, um, where southeast winds of 60 to 80 will affect southern sections of Metro Vancouver this morning, but winds will ease in the afternoon as the front moves into the interior of the province. Moderate rain forecast for Metro Vancouver. Now, people were asking me about, uh, are the winds coming to the southern interior? And I said, well, kind of. And what I meant was uh, Saturday and Sunday, we could see some winds pick up. Yeah, as the next system moves through, we could see some more power outages in the province. That could complicate things if we still don't have all the power outages solved by the end of today, which I think is a chance. And I know the hydro crews are working very hard. But there's a lot of trees down, and that's just the way it is. We'll go look at the uh, storm that's coming next. We're in a matter of minutes here, but let's just revisit one more time here. Rainfall totals for central BC coast. The highest was at Kamano, 122 millimeters. Insane. Storm totals for North Vancouver Island. Tassis had the highest there at 134 millimeters reported. Holy cow. Maximum wind gusts. Uh, for coastal BC, Sartine had 139 kilometer hour wind gusts. That's over hurricane strength. Solander had 119. Herbert Island, 106. So some very strong winds. Uh, very strong winds in the interior. Prince George got a measurement of 87. Utsa got 79. That's why we got so many power outages there. Quinella Airport topped it at 63. Punsy was about the same. Let's play through the graphic here. People have been asking me about Tropical Storm Melissa as well right now. I believe she's going to take a veer up towards the north. It's going to follow this uh, uh, this. Um, highway, basically, and take a turn to the north. So I'm concerned that it's going to strengthen and maybe come through Cuba. Uh, but again, I've not really been paying attention much. That's way out of my forecast zone. Still, uh, I know some Canadians are worried they're down there and whatnot. have been asking me questions. So pay attention down here to where GFS says it's going to go. Okay, so here's uh, basically the next low is right there coming at the BC coast. That's tomorrow's story. But we still have the atmospheric river now moving on through. It's going to make its way into the United States today. Boom. And then, uh, of course, the track of it is pushing up. So we're going to see snow start to increase in southeastern British Columbia now as we come into that. But here's that next low. And boof, in time for Saturday, here comes the shit. Going to have a lot of snow come into some of the high mountain passes. Going to get messy. think everyone's going to get a little bit. And this is more snow than rain this time. It's quite warm right now. It's like 9 degrees in Wells at 3,953 uh, feet above sea level. That's pretty warm for this time of year. Okay, there you can see Melissa looks like that's a that looks like a hurricane now to me, 958 millibars. So that's probably in hurricane status or approaching it. So that's Melissa moving through that, you know, basically between uh, uh, making making the run between Cuba and its neighboring countries. Um, next storm coming in right after that. So we got a crappy uh, visit Saturday night into Sunday, get a little bit of a time off, just quick, brief, high pressure, and then bam, back in time for Tuesday, next round next week. That'll be next week's forecast discussion. And then another round in time for looks like Friday next week. Big time round. So we are into this nasty weather. The good news is I think this is going to warm things up a little bit. A little bit of a ridging there. So we think that we'll get uh, again a little warm up for that next storm to come on in. But I mean, right now we're looking at most things in the interior are going to fall as snow once this next low comes down and draws a bunch of cold air down upon us. And then one more time through Hurricane Melissa, Hurricane Melissa, Hurricane Melissa, fish storm out to sea. So let's look at the jet stream and see where it's going. Here you can see the, the trough is really slamming into the U.S. coast. You can see ridging's pretty nice there for east coast there. New storm system 
develops in the east. There goes a hurricane on by. And then here's that bit of ridging at the end of our forecast period sometime next week as that new storm comes around Halloween time sometime, give or take a day or two or three. We're going to see that next system come in and bump our temperatures back up. But it looks like we got mostly a cool week. A lot of precipitation is going to fall as snow now over this next week until we get that bump up in temperatures. At least if you're in higher country, you're going over mountain passes and things like that again. Last weekend was messy on the mountains. This weekend could be even worse. Here we are coming into the weekend. You can see the majority of the atmospheric river now hitting down on the Oregon coast. We can see some of that still spilling up. We can see heavy precipitation in the coast mountains up and down. Some of that is falling as rain in the south end. We saw a little bit of rain coming through the caribou this afternoon, late this afternoon, game time basically. A little bit of snow up in the high mountains. This isn't our story yet though. This is just the tail off of that last storm, the storm we've just been experiencing right now. And that's bringing messy conditions Friday night into the southeast corner of BC, like I said. If you got uh, plans to travel through the mountain passes at all uh, tonight, you're in trouble. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't. Here's the next low coming in time for Saturday morning all along the coast. Wham, here comes the winds whipping up the U.S. coastline. Boof. A nice uh, moment of dryness. Oh, look how nice it is. Look how nice it is. And then wham, here she comes. Here she comes. It's going to be a good one. So let's try to get the full image now. We're going to zoom in here and try to get a little bit more on what's going on. Temperature's nice at uh, noon. Looks like we got uh, everyone above zero. Cam loops up to 10. That's going to change pretty quickly though. It's going to change a little bit. But first we got this guy. Bring a little bit more warm air first. So we enjoy the bump up while it happens. But as you can see what's going to happen in behind. It's going to draw cool air down. Now we got heavy snow on Saturday evening all through the Coast Mountains. We got heavy rainfall. Mix of rain and snow at different elevations. A little bit of snow uh, coming in the country west of Quinell. Some of that's going to spill up to the Highway 16 corridor. Highway 16 corridor as you go uh, down towards Blue River. Highway 5 going to see a lot of snow. Revelstoke Pass going to be pretty nasty there. Looks like 99 is going to be very nasty tonight. It's going to be very gross, friends. It's going to be a really gross weekend. we got this one gap in the central interior where probably not much is going to fall. Lucky for us. Lucky for us. So that's what we got until Sunday morning. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Joey, only care be weather dude YouTube channel. I'm the only one of my kind, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for all the support.